Hey guys, this is Joshua from Technip.com and today we will take a look at the Sony A6300 with the 16 to 70 mm f4 lens. Before we get into the pros and cons, here are some of the features we get from the A6300. The Sony Alpha A6300 is a mid-range mirrorless camera with a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor. It shoots 4K video and a powerful 425 face detect autofocus point system that is ideal for capturing action. It comes with a built-in viewfinder, pop-up flash and horseshoe, a tilting screen, two control dials and nine custom buttons. It is also dust and moisture resistant. It has a microphone input and a lever to switch between the AE lock and the focus lock. It can burst up to 11 frames per second and it supports 4K video up to 30p and 1080p video up to 120p for slow-mo video. So that's almost all the features that you need to know about this camera and we will get straight into the pro and cons. I really like the compact design. Coming from a DSLR shooter, I can really feel the difference when I'm holding the A6300. It is much easier to carry around with me. The 4K recording on this camera is really good. I test it out myself and seen some comparison on the internet, I must say that this is the sharpest video quality I have ever seen on a consumer level. Part of the reason is due to the A6300 has a 6K sensor and it downscale the image to a 4K video. The autofocus works really well when you pair up with Sony lenses. It is quick and quiet and this is the very first time I would actually trust the camera to do the focusing for me. Although it might sometimes lose focus a little bit, but I'm fine with that as it will continue tracking very quickly. So that's all the features that I like about the A6300 and now let's talk about the cons. I believe that everyone knows that this camera overheats really quickly. Although me myself haven't get to experience it yet, but I do feel that it gets warm after 10 to 15 minutes of continuous video recording. Sony does release new firmware to fix the problem, but it doesn't seem to help much. So the next one is loading shutter. The A6300 really suffers a lot from this issue, plus it doesn't have the in-body stabilizer like its bigger brother. So if you're gonna shoot it handheld, it is better to get a lens with OSS or you may end up with an unusable footage. As usual, the menu is still complicated for me. I really need to dig into the menus to find what I want, plus it doesn't have a touchscreen. So that's definitely a big learning curve for me to get used to it. So that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you are interested to see the video quality of the A6300, you may click this video as it is shot on it. So thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.